player 2 has joined the game. Hey yo, what's up everybody and welcome to episode 136 of the Two Player Co-op Podcast. As always, I'm one of your hosts here, Kevin, along with my brother from my mother's show. How are we doing? Benalino, Bino. Benalino, Bino. You should have been here for the post-show. <laughs> I mean, the pre-show. The post-other show, pre-this show. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I got this nice new shirt, supporting Sacred Symbols. My boy, Kyle Moriarty. This shirt here. But if you like cool shirts, you can either go to Collins Last Stand or you can go to teespring.com slash stores slash two-player co-op. Uh, <laughs> hey, we, we started something new this week. We hadn't talked about it yet, so nobody replied, and that's fine. Blah, blah. But if you ever want to have any, if there's anything that you ever want us to discuss on the podcast, go over to our Twitter at twitter at, at, at two player underscore co op. It's our pin pin tweet there. <laughs> oh, pin, oh, pin tweet. It's our pin tweet there. There's a link to a Google Doc. If there's anything you ever want us to discuss on the podcast, or you've got any questions you want us to answer, or anything like that, go over there. Make sure you fill that out. And uh, we'll talk about it on the next episode's podcast. We'll delete it every week and we'll go through whatever we get. Uh, this is the Two Player Co-op Podcast. Thank you guys so much for being here. This is the podcast where every week two brothers get together to discuss everything you need to know about in the world of video games. If you're listening on audio, make sure you go over to youtube.com slash two player co-op and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button if you like the video. It means a lot to us and it helps us on our quest to get to 1,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Uh, if you haven't seen it already... Go check out our Let's Play series we did on Cuphead. It was a six-part series we did this past Monday. Uh, two days ago as this is going up. We did beat Cuphead. Maybe the most... I mean, we've we've had some good Let's Play series here that I've had a this, lot of fun doing. Yeah. Like all the Marios and stuff, but Cuphead was really something special. It's possibly my favorite. Yes. It was a lot of fun, so go check it out if you haven't seen it already. It would mean a lot to us. Thank you so much. Uh, So much for that Star Wars hiatus. Yeah, how about that? So we're getting, they're taking a hiatus from 2019 all the way until 2022, which is probably how long it would take them to film a movie and get it ready to come out anyway. So I don't know. It, they, they made such a big deal about going on this hi- hiatus and stuff. Solo bombed. I'm cautiously excited for episode nine. Why even say you're taking a hiatus if you're really just going to wait one more year from when you would have... It, it Like, the main Star Wars has been coming out every other year. You're going to wait one year to put out another one. We don't know what this new trilogy is, but it is a trilogy. I don't know if it's the one Ryan Johnson is working on or if it's the one the Game of Thrones guys are working on or whatever. Like, I don't know. They're being very secretive about it. But we got three more Star Warses coming up. I'm worried that I'm going to have a tough time getting hyped for that this is what i was saying to bernardo like i get they've they've kind of run the whole skywalker thing into the ground at this point and that's what bernardo's point was i get that but i don't know how you get people to care about a brand new trilogy with all because that's what this is going to be i assume it's going to be all new characters i yeah it's in the same galaxy maybe a different planet like i don't know what it's going to be but like how do you get people invested when it's not the Skywalker saga, I don't know how they do that. I really don't. Right. Even with the prequel and the, I mean, the prequels and the sequels, um, there were new characters, but there were still old characters. There were at least names we recognized. I think you need to at least have some of that. I don't know if they go even further back prequel or further forward sequel, but I don't know how they appeal to the masses, like the non-hardcore fans, unless you have... You don't need to have the name Skywalker on any right. character or Solo or whatever, but you need to have some kind of tie there. And they will. I mean, it's all the same universe. It's all going to tie together, but I don't know. I'm not... I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think Solo showed that you can't just call a movie Star Wars and have it no. make a billion dollars. I mean, it's one of the biggest box off of office flops ever. Bernardo liked it. You liked it when you saw it. That but was like, fine. Yeah. Obviously, it had a budget of three hundred million, not counting marketing, and it made three hundred eighty nine million. So, like, it bombed. No, no matter what you think about the movie, it is unequivocally a ridiculously big bomb at the box office. 
period. That was the whole reason they did this whole hiatus thing to begin with, and now it's it's like they're really taking one extra year. So yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I'm still optimistic for episode nine. I want to see how it all ties up, what they retcon and everything, and we'll see how that does. Also, the Avatar sequels got delayed. I forgot that Disney owns this now because that's Fox. So now Avatar 2 got delayed till 2021, and then 2023 for three, and then 2025 for four. Talk about something I don't care about. I, I don't even remember Avatar being that good. It I remember it being hyped, yes. and I remember being excited to see it, and I remember seeing it and being like, that was good, but like, it's kind of done. I don't know that this needs a whole, like, I don't want to say universe, because it's, I mean, it's just Avatar 1, 2, 3, whatever. Who but needs like, four Avatar movies? I don't know. Also, well, when I, I remember going, I think I went to see it with dad, I want to say. And I remember going to see it and was like, I've never seen anything like this. This is like a technical marvel. And as I'm saying now, it's Red Dead 2 to me. Like, beautiful. Absolutely jaw-droppingly beautiful. Yeah. Don't know how well, they yeah, made this kind of thing. It, right. But now, now like, like, every movie looks like that. Exactly. Like, like it's Black not Panther. Yeah. Like, oh Wakanda looked every bit as good. Yes. Probably better than that. Like, and everything in Endgame. Like, yeah. <sighs> I just don't, I don't know. Get it. I think this there's is not enough substance there to do four freaking movies. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. And if anybody is like bummed that these are getting delayed, let us know. I just I don't get it. I've got it on Blu-ray. I don't think I ever took it out of the packaging. I don't even know why I have it on Blu-ray. Yeah. Like I saw it in the theater. I don't think I've ever watched it at home. I think I saw it in theaters, and I think I've come across it on TV and yeah. watched a little bit of it, but I haven't watched it all the way through or even a majority of the way through yeah. since the theater. It's like, I don't, it wasn't a bad movie. It's no, it just, just nothing fine. I need to see again. It's like a it's six like, out of 10. Fine. Yeah. It's just, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I wonder, this just reeks of James Cameron being like, no, I want the number one box office movie of all time. I want that title back. No. I, I bet Avatar 2 doesn't even make a billion. Is I'll make that prediction right now. Like, I don't even think, like, I yeah. don't think anybody really cares. Like, at the time, it was ground. The, the reason it's number one, at least for one more week, is because, it, like I said, it was just a technical marvel. It was groundbreaking at the time. But now it's like people need more than just something pretty, which right. is really what it was. There was not a lot of substance there. It just wasn't. Yeah. But I don't know. <clears throat> Hooray. You want to talk about Game of Thrones at all, Sean? <laughs> You know, part of me, I'm so, I mean, well, I don't know. I've loved this season. Yeah. Uh, it's not the best season, but what I kind of wanted to say on Twitter, I've been talking about it a lot on there. Right. But it's too hard to get into a hundred and however many characters. 280. Yeah, yeah. 280 now. In every show, when you get to at least the last season or more likely the last few episodes things kind of have to change if you just keep progressing right. the way the whole series has up until that point you're never going to close any loops you're just going to keep opening new things like eventually things need to start converging and in game of thrones the only real way you do that is literally have characters kind of converge you have all these people doing their own thing and throughout <coughs> the series everybody kind of starts making their way and then before you know it they're all in the same location kind of thing you also do it by killing off a lot of people which game of thrones has done the entire time right but uh, there's an argument to be made that the pacing has not been good and i get that i'll yeah i can't, you only I can't disagree episodes. with it yeah now i think the whole season is more or less the same length as the other ones because it's six episodes instead of ten but they've the last They're four excited, have been yeah. like an hour and a half long. So it's probably about the same time, but it seems shorter because it's broken into fewer episodes. Um, I don't understand this whole argument about character development being thrown out the window. I keep seeing people say that and I'm like, uh, Daenerys, everything that happened with Daenerys, I'm not going to get into spoilers in case anybody hasn't seen it, but the stuff with Daenerys, not is that Amelia character. Clark? Yeah. Okay. Not out of character. Uh, the Jamie stuff, not out of character. He just kind of reverted to his old self. I would say, like, is I that what's his face, little guy? No, that's Tyrion. Jamie Lannister is Nikolai Coster Waldo or whatever that guy. Um, 
I don't know. Everything that I've heard people are upset about character wise. Is it like hazy in here or is there something going on with my eyes? Yeah, I think it's your eyes. Maybe the, I mean, the lights are kind of at a different angle. Maybe it's just, maybe it's like right up in my face. Yeah. Cause when I block it out, it doesn't look like, no. Anyway, I don't know. I don't get the whole thing about character development. Like, like Ernie said on Twitter, it yeah. sounds like it's basically people that just things didn't play out the way they wanted it to. Yeah. And that's fine. It's fine to not like decision decisions that story writers take or make but it doesn't mean it's bad it just means you aren't happy with it right like i don't know i've enjoyed it people not enjoying it isn't going to make me enjoy it any less i think a lot of it don't get your pitchforks out is there's a lot of it's not sexism but it's people crying sexism and you have all these strong female characters, but then you just reduce them to this and blah, 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 and they deserve better. And but it's isn't like, What's-Her-Face being strong by doing what she did in the last episode? People are saying, you know, oh, you, you have this strong, powerful woman, but then she goes and just, like, ruins everything and throws everything away because she can't control her emotions. And blah, 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 and it's, just, but then I saw a tweet going back to season two, like, this wasn't Snow, this it has was been, Ash. Yes. A dream thing or a vision or something. Yeah, I was like, they knew what they were doing. They I don't know what any of this the whole means, time. Yeah. But like, I know. I, don't I, know. What I mean, doing. people are free to not like it if they want. That's fine. <clears throat> um, but I've enjoyed it. People not enjoying it isn't going to make me enjoy it any less. I don't care. Uh, I've loved it. Um, Memphis got Boogie. Dad just texted me. We got Boogie Ellis. Really? Yeah. So now all that's missing is RJ Hampton. If they, I don't even know if they have a scholarship for him anymore. Holy but crap! That's awesome. I kind of want to do uh, what was it? Midnight Madness. Oh my god! It would be it'll be this crazy. Be insane. Timber like make it might actually show up this year. He might for this one. Yeah. <clears throat> um. But anyway, Game of Thrones. I've enjoyed it. It is what it is. Yeah. I get people. It's not the best season. I've heard people say this last episode is like the worst in the series. Like, give me a break. Like, could you be more hyperbolic? Just, just relax. Take a step back. Uh, just, it, oh God, I don't know. It annoys me, but at the same time, it's like, I say it doesn't bother me, but <clears throat> it's not going to make me like it any less. Yeah. But just give me a break. I, I just feel like there's a difference between this last season of Game of Thrones, and then you didn't watch it, but the last season of Dexter, Dexter. where it was yes. just unequivocally bad. And yeah. it, like the worst series finale I've ever seen. Like I watched it and I was like angry, not because it didn't go the way I thought it would. I was like, this doesn't make any sense for Deb. It makes no sense for Dexter. He's just going to leave his kid. Like nothing, nothing made sense. The whole last season was just And to like be fair, that's exactly villain. what people are saying about Game of Thrones. <laughs> Except, but I don't think it's true. <laughs> except, but the difference is, this seems like 50-50 or 60-40, whereas Dexter was like 100 to 0. Everybody, I, yeah. I have not seen one person that ever thought the last season of Dexter was good or the way that it ended was good. I've literally never seen, I loved <clears throat> the first four seasons of Dexter were just perfect. You probably, what they should have done, I may have said this, I've said this to you before, I don't know if I said it on here, but like they should have just said like, we're going to do five seasons. You could have done... Are you ever going to watch it? At this point, no. <clears throat> Season one, he finds out the Ice Truck Killer is his brother and all this other stuff. Season two, Dokes finds out about him. He captures Dokes. Dokes dies, whatever. Season three, they went for the Jimmy Smiths. Dokes is. Exactly. They went for the Jimmy... And if you ever watch it, you'll forget I said this. They went yeah. for the Jimmy Smiths thing. You really could have... It was a good season because Jimmy Smiths is awesome. You didn't really need that. Season four was John Lithgow, was a Trinity killer. Okay perfect and it ends with just one of the most heartbreaking didn't see that coming things ever that should have been season three season four is deb finds out season five is dexter on the run like there's but there's eight seasons and there's really five seasons of content yeah you know that's what happens when you stretch out these shows way too long it doesn't seem like game of thrones has been stretched out too long i've never seen i watched the red wedding and i watched it definitely hasn't been too long if anything people are saying (laughs) it should have been longer they tried to cram too much in and uh, it, you but could again, probably make like, that argument. But. This is the biggest show since Breaking Bad, I would say, right? <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's Pop culture-wise, there's nothing that comes close. 
Oh, I mean, pop culture wise, it's far and beyond Breaking Bad. Even Breaking Bad. Whether it's a better show after this last season, I'm sure plenty of people say it's not. I'm on the fence even before this season. They're so hard to compare. But pop culture wise, I think this is the biggest yeah. television series in the history of television. I think people are just so invested that if it's not what they want, exactly, they're not going to like it. Yeah. Speaking of, if it's not what we want, we're not going to like it. You want to do money in the bank predictions? <clears throat> I get it. So the reason I texted you that earlier is we usually consider this one of the big, what, four pay-per-views it's that we usually do series, yeah. picks for. And now all of a sudden I'm like, it's one week away. A, I don't really care. B, I care even less because it's on the same time right. as Game of Thrones. I'm going to be driving to Nashville when it's on. And it's just kind of, I don't know that I like... And I think it's because of the whole Saudi Arabia thing, but I don't yeah. like that they're the time. This is the first pay per view after WrestleMania where everything's just kind of up in the air. It's just, I don't know. I think it's bad timing for it. And it's a shame because I should be thrilled for Money in the Bank, but it's just whatever. I still think there should not be a Money in the Bank pay per view. I think the way you go back get, to just having it at WrestleMania. Have it at WrestleMania. Because you end up having 20 matches. <clears throat> this allows you to have two matches where you put 10 people in each of them. Don't exactly. worry about eight. That gets a lot of people on the card. Two quality matchups. We don't end Without up with doing these stupid battle royals. Fatal four way yeah. tag team matches and battle royals. Yeah, just make it at WrestleMania and be done. Yeah. So I want to run through this real quick. We're not going to spend a lot of time like we normally do, but let's run through some of the matches. Uh, first one I got here Cruiserweight, Tony Nice versus Davari. Aria Davari. I'm going to Tony, Tony Nice. Nice. He's okay. not going to, they're not going to take it off him already. Uh, U.S. Championship Samoa Joe versus Ray. I'm going Joe. Joe, yeah. I don't, I'm like he killed him in what two seconds? At They'll probably stretch this out. They'll probably have another match at man, <clears throat> oh, Saudi Arabia or whatever the next actual pay per view is. But Joe's winning, and yeah, this one I think could be fun. The Miz versus Shane McMahon in a steel cage. Miz gets his win back. Miz will win this. Yeah, they're not gonna have Shane win go back. over the Miz <laughs> twice. No. I'm already just kind of done with this. Like, I don't oh, I know why we're doing this again. Match, yeah, we yeah. didn't even. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. So we're both going Miz. Yeah. So we're we're three for three the same. So yeah. Far. Roman Reigns versus Elias. Roman. Roman. Why is this even a match? I love Elias, but I, do I just too. don't care. <clears throat> like, I don't care if he ever wrestled. He's a great wrestler. I like his matches. I just don't care. I don't. I just. I'm not invested at all. Yeah. Uh, let's do this one next. Becky Lynch versus Lacey Evans for the Raw Women's Championship. I'm going Lacey. I'm going Becky here. Okay, so you're going. But go. I think Becky loses the other one. Okay, so we're going. We're flip flop. Yeah. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown. I'm going Charlotte. Charlotte. I mean, I'm going Becky. <laughs> <Sorry>. like, dang, <laughs> man's going down both of them. No, there's no. I, I just think. But again, with this wild card stuff, they're just like. Every, they, She's going to lose one of them. She's going to win whatever match comes on first. She'll lose the next one. Yeah. I don't know. Is she technically Raw or SmackDown? I think she's Raw. She's both for now. Or no, she's. Mm -hmm. I almost want to say I saw on Twitter that there's a thing for raw tonight and it was like ooh, the <laughs> wild card continues with becky lynch coming to raw so i guess she is on smackdown which well, would make more sense <laughs> that would make more sense for her to lose to lacy if she's technically on smackdown she's not going to stay on smackdown with the raw title but uh, i don't know i don't know now you've kind of convinced me i'm gonna stick with what <laughs> i said but i just think we know vince loves lacy She's awesome. I love her. I think she's. I awesome. think she's really good. Yeah. When she finally started fighting instead of just yeah. walking down the aisle, and farting, farting, and leaving. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's next? WWE Championship: Kofi Kingston versus Kevin Owens. Heel Kevin Owens. It's Kofi. It's Kofi. Um, this this is my main problem with this pay per view. As we're finding as we go through these picks, there's really not a lot up in the air here. No. Nah. Like if Elias beats Roman, it. Okay, it doesn't even matter if he does. It's not for a title. Like, I, I just feel like other than the Money in the Bank matches, I think everything else other than the two women's matches, everything of consequence is pretty much telegraphed, I think. Yeah, I don't see them having Owens go over Kofi. Um, that being said, there's not a whole lot of 
big name heels on now SmackDown. Daniel Bryan's just he's out of the world title picture. Now, yeah. I don't know what they're going to do with Kofi, but I don't think Owens beats him. No, I think Kofi wins. You, you can't take him off. Take it off him after one month. Yeah. As much as I love Owens, it, it, it's got to stay with Kofi. All right, let's do the women's money in the bank. <clears throat> so as of now, we're recording this Monday night. You got Natty, Dana Brooke, <sighs> Naomi, Alexa Bliss, Bailey, Mandy Rose, Amber Moon, Carmella. I don't think anybody from Raw is winning it. Wait, who are the four Raw? I don't know. Natalia. Natty, Dana, Alexa, Alexa and Naomi, maybe? No. Is she on Raw now? Naomi's yeah, because the Usos are on Raw. So, yeah. I would like to pick Alexa, but she's already won it. And I don't care. She's clearly not 100%. How she just keeps right. showing up for matches here and there. Something's <laughs> still off of her. She's not winning. Um, It wouldn't surprise me if Mandy won. I think... Ember should win. Yes. I think Bailey will win. I think Ember should. I think Mandy Rose. Sorry, Nick. It wouldn't th- it wouldn't shock me. I think Mandy Rose. It also wouldn't surprise me if Carmella wins it again. I think she's gotten so much better in the ring. She's like, way better now than she was. Yes. Then. When she was the women's champ, I was like, okay, we're back to the divas stuff now. Like she can't But that's kind of how Alexa Bliss was. When she first won it, I'm like, she what? was more just like and now she's mic, awesome. And now she's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm going Mandy Rose. I would I want Ember to win it. I think she deserves it. But yeah, I'm going Mandy. It does just kind of make sense. It seems like you typically have heels win money. It's in just the bank. better for a heel to carry. It's it. better, yeah. yeah. That's why Mandy makes sense. There's not a lot of heels in this. I mean, like Dana true Brooke, heels. I guess. I don't even know what Natty, but like no one, they're not winning. They're literally, why are they even in this match? Right. <clears throat> I kind of like Mandy, but I'll stick with Bailey. Okay. Because I kind of want to see a Bailey heel turn. Men's match. Late breaking news. Sammy Zayn has replaced Braun Strowman. Poor Strowman. So Sammy versus Ricochet versus Drew McIntyre versus Baron Corbin. Why can he replace him? <laughs> Versus Ali versus Finn Balor versus Andrade versus Randy Orton. I feel like I said Randy. I don't know. Randy Orton. Orton's not winning. No. I'd be fine if he did, but he's not. He's just there to. He's just there to Ali's give a couple of cool it. RKOs. Ali's not there. Ricochet's yet. not winning it. Ricochet's Sammy's not, not there winning yet. It. Sammy's not. Finn's Intercontinental Champion. The obvious pick here is Drew. I think it's Drew or Andrade. Maybe Andrade. I just feel like they've crapped all over Drew for so long that not as long as they have Braun. They've like you've got this guy who like Vince should look at him and go, There's a lot of beef. <laughs> and like give him the title right away. But like they were building up to that and they were doing so well when you know when he split from Ziggler and they did the diesel and Sean thing, except diesel, you know what I mean? They they're like they were doing it so well and then it's like, well now he can't win a match. What I would like to see I'm not i I'm not I'm going to throw this out there, even though I don't really think it's going to happen. I think Drew does win. Okay. And it's not my official pick. I mean, nothing's an official pick. I'm going to say that he cashes in that night against Kofi and jumps to SmackDown. Okay. Just to give him kind of a fresh start. Stop hanging around with Corbin and Lashley. Just get him out of Raw. Now, I don't want to see him keep following Roman, but... You could sell some good matches with those two. Yes. I don't know who else you have Roman feud with on SmackDown right now, besides stupid, uh, what's his name, the big dude, Lester. What's his name? Not Lester. Exactly. That's how unforgettable he is, Lars. Forgettable he is. Sorry. <laughs> Unremarkable. Um, Irregardless. I'm gonna say Drew wins and cashes in and takes it from Kofi. Just to just something needs to happen at this pay per view. Unfortunately, I'm saying Baron Corbin wins it, throwing all logic out the window. I, I just think they're going to give it to... I can see him carrying the briefcase in his stupid waiter <laughs> uniform with his pieces of flair on and everything. Yeah. I do not want that. I want it to be Drew. There's been all these backstage rumors that they're like... That they've been saying, we can't screw up Money in the Bank again. Like, yeah. they've made Money in the Bank kind of a joke on the men's side like three out of the last four years or whatever it's been. Two out of three years, whatever it's been. But Vince is Vince. I think he, I think they love Baron Corbin for some reason. 
Like I, I was on the Baron Corbin hate train as soon as he came up, and I was like, I don't see anything in this guy. And everybody's like, No, 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 he's great in NXT, and you know, he's he just whatever. had no personality. Wolf, blah blah blah. I'm like, he, I don't, he can't wrestle. He's at least got. I think he could, but they I, need to get him out of this weird gimmick. Like he's at least got a personality. He has a character now. Yes, Chili's it's just stupid. Yeah, like. I think he's I better know. on the mic than he is in the ring, and that's not saying a whole he lot. He has a chance to be good. Good. I don't know that he will yes. be, but... Good. Great? No. McIntyre, Andrade, these guys have a chance yeah. to be great. And they're actually, they actually already are great. <laughs> great. <laughs> great. <laughs> All right, last match up. Universal Championship, Seth versus AJ. Seth's winning it. I think Seth's winning it. This just seemed... I guess this is going to be an AJ heel turn. Just because it just feels like a placeholder match to me. It seems very AJ Shinsuke at WrestleMania. Like, yeah, whenever you have two faces, more often than not, you have a turn. somebody kicks somebody in the D. Yeah. Now, I don't think AJ wins the title. I wouldn't surprise me if it was WrestleMania all over again. Seth beats him clean. Handshake after the match. And then, Whoa, and then, yeah. So I don't know. I think AJ turns, um, are we, so do we have Saudi Arabia and then SummerSlam? Is there something else between? There's something with a new name. Remember, it was um, Extreme Rules got canceled. They renamed it something else. It's not Great Balls of Fire. It's not that stupid, but it's something relatively stupid <laughs> in June, like two weeks after Saudi Arabia. Oh, really? And then there's still something in July. Really? Yeah. Let me see if I can look it up real quick. Ugh. Uh, let's see. Super Showdown, and then Stomping Grounds. That's stupid. And after that, Wikipedia runs out of <laughs> Wikipedia.exe. <laughs> so they don't know what comes after that because I don't think WWE knows what comes after that. <laughs> so those are our Money in the Bank predictions. I think it will be a very, on paper, this still, even though a lot of it's predictable, this should be a very good show. It should be. I feel like, though, because I'm going to be driving to Nashville for this conference, like, I'm just going to, like, if I get there before the main event, I'll turn it on, but I'm never going to go. I don't think I'll go back and watch anything. I'll get my alerts on my phone as I'm driving, like, okay, this person won, that person won, okay, whatever. I'll watch. When does it start? Six? Yes. So I'll be able to watch some of it before Game of Thrones. Unfortunately, it starts at six. The Game of Thrones will probably, by the time Game of Thrones is over, the pay-per-view is probably just about over. When does that go on Central? Nine or eight? Eight. Eight to, like, 9.30. Oh, you probably got an hour left after that. That's true. Unfortunately. Sean, what have you been playing this week? Anything? Uh, I don't think I've... I think this is the first time in a while I have not played any Cuphead. I think I've <laughs> officially run out of things to do in the game. I mean, there's stuff I you could do. You have to beat do, it on Expert. Yeah, uh, that's not happening. No. Um, I um. don't know. I think I'm at pretty sure i'm at the final boss of oh blaster two. master oh never mind well that too i meant cage too kingdom hearts oh cage kh oh like <laughs> cage too um rage 2 is out now check it out you know, i don't it know like a 70 i don't know that i'm beating this game i cannot beat oh, this boss really? he's like do you fight it in vehicle mode or guy mode guy mode okay and it's the same boss you fought earlier, except now he's just a lot harder. And, whatever. and I can't. It's probably something that if I played enough, I like up might be able to beat him. Yeah. But it's really tough, and I'm just getting really frustrated. But he's got to be the last boss. Um, and then finally today, before I came over, I fired up um, Tetris 99. Oh. How'd that go? I suck. First of all, yes. I didn't even know. Like, it's just like push X to play, and then all or A or B, whatever. And then all Use of a sudden, the I'm like playing to do this target. Whatever. But they don't. But they don't tell they don't you. Tell you anything. There's no tutorial, so I had to look it up online. I'm like, I didn't even never I keep did getting that. ganged up on. Like, yes, I'm like down here. Is there a way to like, prevent that? No. Okay. Um, 
I saw the R stick and I figured out I can move it and I'm yeah. like, oh, that's who I'm targeting. But like, am I doing anything? Right. Do I need to then hit a button to actually do something to these people? I think it happens automatically or you can use the left stick if you can look at 99 other players. No and be like, Oh, I want to attack that guy. But I don't think while you you're trying to keep up with. Yeah, you don't send anything. It's just as you clear lines, exactly. it just automatically goes to either Wherever who you're targeting, targeting or yeah. your auto target thing. There were a couple times where I thought I was doing great. You're like, there's 95 people left. I never finished above, I think, 36. Oh, that's way better. I stopped when I couldn't get past 70 after like three games. I was like, nah, man. I'm yeah, good. I don't know. I, it's, I'd like to think I'm good at Tetris, but I, I don't know. I'm good at nice, leisurely Tetris. That's what I'm, I'm saying. not good when I got people like attacking me and throwing garbage at me. It's fun. I already know I'm never going to get first place. Like it's it's no. not going. I'm to not going to ever get top ten for crying out loud. Uh, yeah, that's probably true. I feel like if we would have jumped on this, if we would have had a Switch Online subscription when they launched this, yeah, it would have been different when we're all at the same level. But like I said last week, like we're all. You and I are like two or three months behind everybody else that's playing this game. So it's like, why why even play? Right. This is why I don't play Call of Duty and like Fortnite and crap. Like an Apex Legends. Like there's no point. Yeah. I'm not good, A. And two, everybody's better at this than me. And C, they've been playing it more than me. Yes. Oh, it's that's your light. water. Or that. Oh, it's the ice. Okay. So yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it. I don't think I played anything else. I beat Cuphead by myself. I do have to say, <laughs> playing through that final... <laughs> I'm going to have to eat that ice. Playing through the final boss, the two of us, was like, okay, I know I can do this. Yeah. If it's just me, I'm going to do more damage against him than I would the two of us. I know the patterns now. I'm yeah. used to the go... <laughs> <laughs> it's still when he does the blue like the five blues and the one pink thing it still Those messes me part. up yeah. but I'm like if I can get past that with three or four HP that that is the hardest part because otherwise yes. it's just dodge the axe if you can dodge an axe you can dodge a wrench you know what I mean get on the other side of the bomb thing dodge the axe pepper him with the spread he cries, and you got the two on each side. You you shinku one, you spread the other one, pepper him. As long as you don't lose track of where the poker chips are falling from, that's yeah. what can get you. Yeah. Where you just lose a cheap, a cheap <laughs> HP for no reason. And then the final part is actually really easy because after I finally after I beat it, Nick was watching me, and then he went upstairs to shower. No, came down. I was like, "Hey, you want to see me beat the final boss?" Yeah. And then I died like the first phase. But then the second time I was like, I just, I nailed him. And he's like, how did you do that, dad? I'm like, dad's awesome. So I beat Cuphead. I did beat, uh, because I can't have Sean do better than me. I did beat one boss on Expert. It was just the potato. The potato slash onion slash carrot. Uh, Super easy. I need to go back and just get an S rank on that just so I've gotten it, even though it doesn't matter. I did try the first stage trying to just do the no shooting thing p rank whatever and that ain't ever happening it's just not i tried with five hp and i tried it with the dash special and i was like this is not for me i'm not this good at games the one with the little helicopter guys coming down yeah that's one of the tougher that's the one oh, is i it really? started with oh okay i think the one with the uh, woody woodpecker things yeah it's probably easier because you just jump over the rolly guys and go that one's not too bad guys. the part where you're going up I can't imagine that. That's the toughest part. That's why I didn't even try that. It's because of the up part. But I think that's probably overall easier than that other one. Yeah. But the tough part about the one you're doing is while you can dash over the final boss, you need to wait. The guy that's like making the acorns. Yeah. You need to wait right before you get to him. Wait for some enemy to shoot a parryable oh, ball. So, pop and then so you can dash. like wait for it to get in front of you. Jump parry off of it so you can get high enough so you can dash over him and if you don't make it you can't get back up to the previous level without just falling off the cliff to where he bounces way up when he comes okay. back to life so you're gonna get hit every time and chain star by the time you get there you only have one or two health left anyway and so that's the hardest part maybe the hardest part it's the most frustrating part about that level yeah is you do all that work to get to the end and then you need to get this perfect jump over him and it's just a pain yeah i'm not i'm done um so I'm looking through this thing and I'm not seeing it. 
but sometimes I miss stuff. But we don't have on here, but there is uh, some DLC coming yes. for Cuphead. We don't know much about it, but I'm still, I don't even care what it is. Right. So this Actually, apparently, we know a little bit. Yeah. You said yeah, there's like a new island. It and, got announced at E3 2018 because I was like, I think I Oh, Googled, so this isn't even new. No, it got announced a year ago. Uh, just still not out. Okay. They said it's coming in 2019. A new island, new bosses, new power-ups, new playable character, uh, the Great Chalice. I forget what her actual name is. Alice? No. <laughs> <laughs> Alice the Chalice. But... Like, I just want more Cuphead. I don't care what it costs. I mean, if it yeah, was $60, care. I'm not going to buy it. If but like, the whole game itself is only 20 It's got to be And they're 10. not... Even if Maybe it's 20 15. Even if it's 20 it's still probably still it. buy it. Because I feel like they have ripped us all off by only charging $20 for this game. And the other way around. We ripped them off. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean. <laughs> like, I'm so excited for it. I have no idea when it's coming out. But I can't wait to play. We'll probably do another couple Let's Plays. Oh, when it comes out, we will definitely. We will be all over that. And Because we've... By the way, if you saw our Let's Play, my game did save. Don't worry, because it crashed after it. (laughs) It did save, so we're good there. I mean, it would be easy to beat it again. But, yeah, I'm so excited for it. I don't know. They they gave... Like, the trailer a year ago gave a hint. Like, a salt and pepper baker guy or something. It's like... Whatever. I don't even... Just... Yeah, it Bring, can be any. Give us there's, three, four, five more bosses, a couple more running guns. I don't care. We will be all over it. I'm so excited for it. And then I hope they're working on Cuphead too. Yep. Also. But yeah, Cuphead, uh, it's it's just so good. If you haven't played it, you must only have a PlayStation because otherwise you have no excuse. That's true. Also, you're turning <laughs> <laughs> this freaking thing. <laughs> One other thing I've been playing this week. <laughs> I haven't watched Racing Kratos yet. I'm going to do it Thursday or Friday probably. Or in Nashville when I'm bored. I'll just watch it then. But I was like, it's been a year. There's been something gnawing at the back of my brain. My medulla oblongata. Stop shaking the table. <laughs> I was like, it's my third favorite game of all time. I want to play God of War. I started a new game plus. I don't think... I'm going to be far behind you. Really? Because I'm running out of things to play. We're in such a dead, dead spot, right? Like, I've got Kingdom Hearts 3, but I was like, I don't want to play it till you play it. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, and I know, I'm like, I'm not going to know what's going on no matter <laughs> what, so I might as well just wait until you play it too. So, like, there's nothing I want to play until, like, I don't want to play Rage 2. I don't care about that. Yeah. Like, Days Gone is very just bleh from everything I've heard. Even Colin, who liked it, I was like, it still does not sound like it's for me at all. There's nothing until Bloodstained, June, what did we say, 18th, I think, 25th on Switch. So I'm like, I might as well just play God of War again. Like, it's, I want to play it again, so I started a new game plus. It's been a year. Should I say anything about spoilers? Uh, if you don't want to be spoiled, if somehow you haven't played the game yet, but you care enough not to be spoiled, but not enough to have played the game yet, Fast forward like one minute. Spoiler alert. You do start with the Blades of Chaos. Yeah. And it completely changes the game. So everything, like I was telling you the other day, so the the difficulty gets bumped up a little bit. I'm playing it on normal. I'm not going to play it on Give Me God of War. There's no there's no way in hell. But like the first fight against Balder, well, the stranger as he is there, if you play God of War fresh, you if you encounter ice enemies... Your ice axe, the Leviathan axe, does not work against them. You have to either you have to use your fists. However, in New Game Plus, you have your blades of chaos, which are powered with fire. Fire, which counteracts ice. So you can fight like it was so weird fighting the stranger with the blades of chaos. Like it felt great, but it was so weird. Like I remember just hey, it was stranger. a stranger. Got some things on sale. <laughs> Like, I remember it just being a fist fight between, like, Superman and Zod the first time. And yeah. I still loved it this time, but it definitely made it easier. Being able to hit him from long range instead of, like, he, like, I don't know if you, I don't even want to spoil it, because you probably forgot how the fight is, but he moves so quick that, like, and he jumps up high and you got to, like, I forgot how to target people in this. You push, you, you click R3 in to target him. So like, but if he jumps up high and you lose sight of him, you have to find him again before you can target him again. And then it's just, long story short, it's still, it just feels so good. Like the, and when I'm swinging this ax at people, like 
at the Draugr's and all this other stuff. Like, it just feels so good. Like, the combat feels so... It's completely unlike every other God of War game, and I remember why I loved it so much. It just feels like... Just it just it, it feels like you're swinging this big ass stormbreaker thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And well, I loved the whole throw the axe, call it back to you in the hole. Funk. I never got as this is my third favorite game of all time. I never got to like the hype levels that everybody else was like. I just want to throw the axe and call it back, and it's the best thing ever in games. So I was like, yeah. I feel like there's a little bit of hyperbole there. As much as I love this game, I, I love the game for the story and and the combat and and everything, but like. Calling the axe back, it never felt to me, which is as much as I love this game, and it was my game of the year last year, it never felt as amazing as everybody else made it up to be, but it does still feel cool. Yeah. And I, I love the the puzzle solving elements. You know, you lift this bridge up, and then it's like, well, how? then it falls down if you let go of the thing. Oh, yeah, throw the ice axe at it, and that freezes it, and you do. It's just, it's so good. The only thing I will say, I have a regular PS4. This is kind of chugging a little bit. Really? Like, I don't remember this when I played through it the first time. I don't know if updates have done something to it, but there's a couple times where it's like when I was in the fight with the stranger, there were times where the sound effects of him bashing me into a rock were happening before I was seeing it on the screen. And I was like, oh, well, this is, and it finally caught up, but it was like it was, and there's sometimes when it goes transition from one scene to another, it's like, it, uh, and then it catches up, and I'm like, Ooh. yeah, yeah. I don't remember that. It's no fault to God of War or Sony Santa Monica or anything. It's probably just me having a base PS4. But you can tell this really was made to run on the PS4 Pro. Is all I would say, I guess. Right. So I love it. Um, it'll be interesting to see how quick I get. Th- I've only played like an hour and a half or something. I haven't put a lot of time into it, but it'll be interesting to see what I'm not going for the platinum. And I don't need to do any side quests because I've I'm, I've got all my armor, I've got my weapons, I've got I'm level seven, almost level eight, which seems like nothing. But God of War, I think you can only get to level nine. But I'm at level seven. Um, there is one new item, like a red. I, I forget what it's called, but there's a red item that you can find in chests and stuff in New Game Plus, which will help you level up past what you could do in the base game. I think I started mm-hmm. finding some of those chests around there. Um, but I've come across like two Nornir chests. I'm like, I don't, I don't need this. Where you have like a bell here, a bell there, a bell there. Oh uh, like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't need to do this. I've got everything I need. I already got the platinum, so I'm just, I just walk right by them. I'm like, I don't, no, thank you. Right. Um, but it feels as good as it did the first time I played it. It's fantastic. Sean, you want to get in the news of the week? Sure. <sighs> so, if you're a '90s kid. Do you remember when the government was going to crack down on video games? On uh, like Mortal Kombat? Yeah, because guess what? They're trying to do it again. This comes from Kotaku. Senator Josh Hawley today announced a bill, this was last week, that would ban loot boxes and pay-to-win microtransactions in, quote, games played by minors, a broad label that the senator says will include both games designed for kids under 18. It's a warranty. We don't need the warranties. We don't need no stinking warranties. That was me. <laughs> what was I saying? Both games designed for kids under 18 and games, quote, whose developers knowingly allow minor players to engage in microtransactions. Holly will introduce the bill, quote, the Protecting Children from Abusive Games Act to the U.S. Senate soon. In press materials announcing the bill, Holly's team brought up the Activision game Candy Crush as an egregious example of pay-to-win microtransactions thanks to its $150, quote, luscious bundle. Lucious or luscious? Luscious. That comes with a whole bunch of goodies. This bill will also likely apply to a host of online games that feature loot boxes and other ways in which players can spend money for real benefits. Quote, when a game is designed for kids, game developers shouldn't be allowed to monetize addiction, Holly said in place release, press release. And when kids play games designed for adults, they should be walled off from compulsive microtransactions. Game developers who knowingly exploit children should face legal consequences. Last fall, the FTC promised to investigate loot boxes, loot boxes, boxes following a letter from Senator Maggie Hansen Hassan that she wrote in the wake of 2017 string of games featuring the heavy usage of predatory microtransactions such as Middle Earth Middle Earth Shadow of War and Star Wars Battlefront 2 although some companies have pulled back on the practice popular games like Overwatch FIFA and Apex Legends continue to make big money off random microtransactions 
Many of those games are played by both adults and children. An update. The Entertainment Software Association, the video game industry lobbyist group, sent over a statement shortly after this bill was introduced. Quote, numerous countries like Ireland, Germany, Sweden, Denmark, Australia, New Zealand, New Zealand, <laughs> and the United <laughs> Kingdom determined that loot boxes do not constitute gambling. We look forward to sharing with the senator the tools and information the industry already provides that keeps the control of in-game spending in parents' hands. Parents already have the ability to limit or prohibit in-game purchases with easy-to-use parental controls. Hallelujah! Where's the Tylenol? I have four kids. Now, we're not going to get political here. I think government regulation in certain areas is 100% necessary. I don't want beef being sold to me that's like spoiled and contains maggots and crap. You know what I mean? Literally, crap. Like, <laughs> I don't want that. There are places where regulation is a very good thing. Video games, it's like, I don't know if it's the, 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 the greed of these big corporations or what it is that have finally got us to this point. Like, the last time that I can ever remember something like this happening was back in the 90s with Mortal Kombat. And the video game industry said, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, 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 okay. We're going to put ratings on the games. Y'all leave us alone. We're going to take care of this. Video games have not taken care of this up until now. But I have I have four kids. I got kids. I got kids. <laughs> Two of them play Fortnite and Clash of Clans and whatever other games that are like rife with microtransactions. Do you want to know how I take care of that, Sean? How, Kevin? I parent! I parent my kids! I know. I went a little Michael Scott there, but like... my The iPads that my kids use are set up so that they can't even download a free game, much less buy anything that costs actual dollars without their iPad sending a request to my iPad or my phone to where it pops up and says, Nick wants to get kick the buddy for free. Do you approve? And I would say yes or no. There are so many parental controls on consoles that allow you to just say, well, A, you can't make any purchases. I'm going to go in and you have to put in my credit card information every single... That's like how the Switch... Like, that's how my Switch is set up. You can't buy anything unless you log in to your account every single time and put in your payment information. Right. Parents or kids. Same thing on the Xbox. But because I know how to parent, <laughs> Fortnite Season 9 came out last week. Thursday, Friday, whatever it was. And the boys were like, Dad, can we buy the Battle Pass for Season 9? And I said, Yes, son. Well, first I said, do you have $25? And they said, yes, we do. And I said, give it to me. And then, boy, <laughs> boy, be better. <laughs> and then I said, once you give me that $25, you can buy the battle pass. I think a lot of times our politicians just have to have, they just have to make it look like they're doing something to justify their existence, their <laughs> ongoing, never ending. I was going to say this, re and I don't know who this guy is. I'm not trying to make any kind of political statement. I couldn't tell you if he's a Republican, a Democrat. I don't really care. This reeks of some, at least to me, who's not really too invested in politics. I hate some politics. no name guy trying to make a name for himself is what the, it just reeks of it. That being said, I don't like loot boxes. I don't right. like microtransactions. I don't like that crap. But I don't think it's the government's place to step in and say, this should not be done. Like, I hate them. I hate them. But this is stupid for the government to be involved in. I just, I don't know. I don't get it. Like, again, certain things should be regulated by our government regardless of who's in charge. This is not something that should. Like, if, if, 
If you're a parent and your kid is spending five hundred dollars on Candy Crush, you need to change the word that the way that you freaking parent. Yeah. If you are a grown ass adult who is spending five hundred dollars on Candy Crush, okay, that's your choice. Right. You want to get? I don't. I've never. I literally. I think I played Candy Crush for maybe thirty seconds in my life. So I don't even know what the microtransactions in, in are there are in there. I, I still play Words with Friends. That's about the only game I play on mobile still. And every time it's like, oh, you can buy these like coins that show you, oh, you could get this word. It doesn't show you the words, but it's like, oh, the triple word is available with based on your tiles. You can either earn them in game, like everybody's bitching about Mortal Kombat. You can either earn them in game by just playing the game and you earn coins and stuff, and then you can buy these 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 power up things. Just like Mortal Kombat, you can play the game and you can buy Sub Zero's freaking whatever cost what whatever. I don't even know. But like or if you don't want to do that, you can buy it. Okay, well good for you, because the game was free to download. It's up to you. I don't care. No. Like I just uh, I don't think this ends up going anywhere. I don't think it will. Loot boxes, uh, I think there's also a big difference between, we're calling this like the loot box ban. There's a difference between loot boxes where you buy, you spend $10 for a drop of like these three things and it kind of is quote unquote random what's in there. But to lump games like Fortnite and stuff in like there, no, you're buying a battle pass which does give you costumes and stuff like this and it gives you like extra eight xp and stuff like this that's that's not gambling that's you downloaded this game for free you've put hundreds of hours into this thing where every few months we're going to do, do a new season you can get new skins and if you want to pay for those you can or you can just keep playing the freaking game i i've never spent myself one cent on Fortnite. i probably played it for five to ten hours i've never spent one penny on it my kids choose to because they, they get money for their birthdays or whatever, and they want to do the battle pass every season it comes out, and they want to get the new skins and be able to level up quick or whatever. That's not gambling or anything like that. I just... Right. For me personally, like I said, it just comes down to there are certain things that the government, our federal government should look out for us in our daily lives, and there are certain things they have no business in. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Let's talk about nope. fun stuff. State of play was last week, a 10 minute state of play. And I do have to say this was much better than the first one. Really for one reason. That one reason, Sean, is the Final Fantasy VII remake trailer reappeared. Well, the Final Fantasy VII remake reappeared for the first time in almost three and a half years. Has it been that long? E3 2015, it got with just the CG trailer. Everybody lost their minds. And then PSX, ooh, sorry. PSX, they showed gameplay. It's been three and a half years since we saw anything on this wow. game. 2017, they announced that they were canceled. Basically, they were pulling a Metroid Prime 4 before Metroid Prime 4. And they were canceling the current game, bringing it back in-house, doing all this other stuff. It is still episodic. I don't know what that means. None of us do. However, we will know more info in June. I still think it looks amazing. I think it looks awesome. I, I've played Final Fantasy for less Final Fantasy 7 for less than an hour I think and even just the little bit that I've played seeing this was like I can't imagine if I loved this game I feel like this would make me lose my freaking mind so I'm torn okay I've wanted this game for so long and it looks beautiful I'm not in love with the whole episodic thing but maybe once we find out more it won't really be that bad um, what I'm worried about is the combat. And I know that traditional, like, turn-based RPGs are kind of a thing of the past. It just doesn't... Unless you're going for that retro aesthetic, like a... Uh, Octopath. Octopath, or the other one, the Setsuna, Setsuna. It works. But in, like, modern games, it's kind of out of place. And... When I think about this style of combat, it makes me think of something like Final Fantasy twelve or Final Fantasy fifteen. To where I don't really have a problem with it. It works when you're fighting regular 
enemies, but it seems like boss fights, it's just kind of just, you know, in Final Fantasy 15, eat, cook a meal and eat it to up your strength and your attack and your defense, or you can attack quicker, move quicker, whatever. And then just everybody put shell and protect on and it just go, just run up to and just bash it, bash, 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 bash until it dies. And I feel like boss fights in these mainly Final Fantasy games, the way that they play now are not as fun. In the original Final Fantasy VII, a lot of the boss fights, you had to like always kind of be thinking like several steps ahead and okay. kind of know what big attack that the boss is going to be doing in a few moves and how you can either prepare for it or try to like kill him before you get to there or whatever. There's a lot of stuff like that. And I don't know how that translates to this more, I wouldn't even call it like active time battle. It's just like a, uh, I mean, I don't even know what you call it, but I'm a little well, worried. see. <laughs> That's what I'm so confused about. There's a lot of people I heard saying that they think now that they've gone back on that, that based on that little bit of gameplay you saw in there where you saw like the HUD down the bottom left and then you saw the, the three characters down the bottom right, they think they've they've scrapped the active battle. Nobody knows because Square hasn't said anything about this game. Yeah. They think they are going back to more of a turn-based thing, which that would turn I did not get that at all. That would that. turn me off. And when I see it, I'm like, no, I see... <laughs> Right. And I see Barrett over here and stuff like it's just so yeah. I, I, I don't know. If, if it's turn based, I'm gonna be like, well crap. But you'll be like, frick yeah, let's yeah. go. You know what I, I mean? I mean I'm in either way. Yeah. I think there's a happy medium to be had because you can't really have a game like that in this day and age where you're just like Phew. attack. Heal. <laughs> Right. Attack. <laughs> like, it just doesn't work. So I get it. I think there's a happy medium in there. I'm trying to even think of how Final Fantasy 15 played. I know it's similar to 12, and they did some kind of cool stuff. with You could, like, do this, like, teleport attack. There's cool stuff in it, but... And the boss fights that were just, like monster closets or like a horde of regular enemies and one or a few like super tough enemies were fine. But mm -hmm. the boss fights where it's like you're just fighting one big giant like robot kind of thing. I feel like those usually end up, they just kind of devolve into just buff up and just run in there and just hack and slash that thing until it dies. And if you're getting low on health, run away for a little bit, cure, run back in and hack and slash till it dies. I don't know. I just... There's too many iconic fights in this game for them. If that's truly how these boss fights are going to work, I don't know. Again, it's not going to stop me from getting the game. Yeah. Like, I've been wanting this for years since PS3. Um, but I don't know. I'm a little worried. How do you think, because again, I played less than an hour. If they do this in three episodes, because they've said it's episodic, but we don't know what that... We have no idea what that means. Is there like a Midgar portion, a B portion, and a C portion that could be split into three games? Well, so the original game was on three discs. Oh, that's right. Yep. And I don't even remember what the third disc is. I know exactly when you go from disc one to disc two. Is it when she dies? It's even after that. Oh, it's not wow. much after that, but I feel like a majority, it seems like a majority of the game, a lot of the Is events are in disc one. Wow. Disc two, it's like not a lot happens story-wise, okay. but it still takes a while in yeah. the game. There's a lot of stuff going on, but nothing really going on. And I'm trying to think of what disc three is. Maybe it's like right before like the final area. So and then maybe all like the post game kind of stuff you can do. So that would be the logical way to split it up would be something similar to that. But yeah, do you just buy the game and they just say, well, you can play up to here for now and we'll tell Year you later, when we'll you can you, play yeah. the next part or I don't know. Well, I don't think it'll be three full priced games. God, I don't think I it's going to be not. three $60 games to play the three or however many. We don't even know if it's three episodes. Some of these games are so big now. I, I still think this whole episodic thing is just asinine. 
Like, I get Final Fantasy VII is a big game. It's not bigger than Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild was a, a freaking 13 gigs on a stupid game cart. Well, the original one, no. Okay. But we don't know. The original one was your standard, which maybe means nothing. To, well, you, you would know what I'm talking about. There's like the overworld. You have the whole map that you're like, cloud. you're walking across a continent that's the size of this table and cloud is this big. And then you go into the city and then the city is like cloud being this big and you're in this room. Like, so like they like Skyward shrink. Sword kind of a thing. I mean, not with the whole, the law, like, you know what I mean? It's just like hubs. You have like this city and this city. Okay. And like, this is a map and maybe you have like a river here, whatever. But like, you're literally like cloud, like home de dum de dum de dum and random battle kill it. Home de dum de dum. Oh, random battle. Home de dum. And now you're in this other town. But once you're in the town, it's not like you're cloud in yeah. a thing this big. You're cloud. If you get cloud is this big, the town is like the size of this room. So it's like they shrink the overworld down and there's just like, there's this area, this area, yeah. this area. And then you just have that overworld map. Now, I don't think they're going to have it that way in this game. It's going to be more, it's going to be one giant world, I assume. Yeah. So if they add, you know, if the equivalent of the overworld has the same detail that all the different towns and stuff did, this game will be bigger than Breath of the Wild. Now, I don't know if that's how they're going to do it. But then that makes me worried that it's going to be three sixty dollar games. Or buy the friggin' five-year pass for $100. But we'll it doesn't make it. sense. It's all one game. That's Nobody would I ever buy get. this and just buy episode one and be like, well, that's all I want to play. Like, it's one game. It's not like it's... What I hope they do is like they did for Hitman Season 1. $60. You get... I don't, I, I'm making this up. Italy first. Two months later, you get Paris. Two months later, you get Sweden. Whatever it is. But you've paid for the game, and you just have to wait for it to come out. If they do that, I'm completely fine with that. If they try to monetize this, speaking of microtransactions and stuff, if they try to just get... Three, if they try to get one hundred and eighty dollars out of you for three episodes, I don't rocks. think they'll do that. They've got to know how important this is to millions and millions of people. They have to do this right, and that's why I don't think they will do that. I think it will be sixty, maybe eighty, whatever. Like we always, everybody always talks about games need to increase in price, whatever. Maybe this is the first one. Maybe it's it's a hundred bucks, and you get episode one. Then in 2020, you get episode two. And 2021, you get episode three. You can play it on your PS5 if you want. I don't know. What scares me is this game does not, uh, the remake does not have the best track record in terms of no. time. Right. Is anybody going to believe Square Enix if they say episode one is out? September 2019. Episode 2 will be out September 2020. Bull get it. crap. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if it was... It took them 10 years to make Final Fantasy 15. Right. right. And like, are they really just going to release it one episode at a time out of, I'm guessing, three episodes? And why would they do that unless the other episodes just aren't ready? And right. Like you said, it's taken this long to get this far. How are they going to get it ready in a year or whatever exactly. it would be? Right. No, so, good point. Yeah. I don't know. Ugh. But I do have faith that they will get this right. I, yeah. They can't. They can't afford to screw it up. They can't. This is not like. There's more pressure on them to deliver this than there is whatever Final Fantasy 16 ends up being. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited! I just want. It. I just. I. I want to want it. I guess is what I was saying. Other news from the state of play. Medieval got another trailer. It, it just looks like a PS1 game with prettier graphics. It's out October 25th. This game does... Did, did you play this on PS1? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. When I look at this, all I when I see the gameplay of this, it's like fixed camera. It's Crash Bandicoot with a skeleton instead of a Bandicoot. I'm like, yeah. this does absolutely nothing for me. If you're excited for this, awesome. I never played Medieval. I don't know, I don't know why this is a thing. Like... This seems to me like it's just a cult hit that they're like, we're going to remaster this and remake it and blah, 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 blah. Like, but, but can we get like 
siphon filter instead right you know or metal gear like i just i don't get it but it's out october 25th that's great monster hunter world iceborne dlc was revealed and sat september 6 on ps4 and xbox one it's coming to pc in winter predator hunting grounds was unveiled and it's coming out in 2020 so this is from the makers of friday the 13th this is this asymmetrical multiplayer things whereas friday the 13th you had six campers and one freddy this you've got like six soldiers and one predator sounds fun but against multiplayer and i just i i don't care about it but people if you like friday the 13th i feel like they're gonna learn from everything they did there and screwed up there as well because that launch was horrible and then they're gonna say we're gonna make it better and you can be the predator it's pretty cool in concept it's just not for me i feel like this game will be pretty big when it comes out next year Uh, yeah i'm with you there it sounds like it should be cool and it may be but it doesn't it doesn't do it for me. Yep. This one does. River Bond was announced. It's out this summer. This is a voxel art dungeon crawler that looks like co-op 3D dot heroes. Shovel Knight, Guacamelee, and other characters will be in there. This looks rad. I'm digging this one, yeah. Should I plug in my PS3 and get wherever the hell it is, your disc for 3D dot game heroes? Uh, if you liked, I'm not even saying it's better, but I mean, if you liked Blossom Tales, you'll like that game. Okay. It's similar enough to Blossom Tales, which they're both similar enough to Zelda. Right. And you loved Blossom Tales. I loved it. Yeah. I'm not saying this one's better. It might be. Wow. It's been so long since I've played, but it's very similar. Okay. It's very much, I mean, obviously a Zelda clone. The giant sword thing takes a little getting used to, but it's also pretty cool. I'd rather have a laser sword, but it's still cool. Uh, yeah. Um, if you're looking for something to play, I would say it's definitely worth it. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of fun. I don't think I ever beat it. Really? But I got pretty far. I don't know why I stopped. Probably just because it's my PS3 and just yeah. why. I mean, yeah. So but no, ri- it's, it's awesome. River Bond looks really cool. That that might be a fun thing for us to download and do some Let's Play of. Um Especially with the Shovel Knights in it. And I need more Shovel Knight in my life. Everybody uh, does. Away was revealed. It's like an animal survival game. I don't care at all. And also they revealed a state of play PS4. And I wrote down here, it is gray. <laughs> <laughs> because that's it's a state of play PS4. And it's like steel, gray, whatever. But it's, it's not even a pro. It's just a regular PS4. Hurrah. They got black and they got gunmetal. I got gunmetal. Uh, so that was the state of play. Uh, last item here before we get to the wrap up, EA Access is coming to PS4, and this comes from Polygon. Electronic Arts is bringing its EA Access subscription service, which offers early access trials to new games and a library of existing games as part of The Vault, to PlayStation 4 this July. EA Access for PS4 will cost cost four ninety cost four ninety nine <laughs> a month or thirty dollars annually, the same price as the existing service on Xbox One. Currently, EA Access promises subscribers access to more than 50 games as part of the vault. That selection includes older and recent games like Star Wars Battlefront 2, Burnout Paradise Remastered, Fae, The Sims 4, Battlefield 1, and EA Sports' most recent Madden, NBA, and NHL games. On Xbox One, EA Access also offers backward compatible Xbox 360 games. EA did not provide a list of compatible titles to the vault for PS4, but presumably the list will be smaller than what's available on the x given that PS4 does not support PS3 games through backward compatibility. In addition to a library of older games, EA Access also offers what's called EA Play First Trials, which provides access to up to 10 hours of newer games. This is actually pretty cool. EA Access's current first Play first trials include Anthem, Battlefield 5, and FIFA 19. Subscribers also get a 10% discount on digital full game purchases, expansions, and in-game items like FIFA and Madden Ultimate Team Points and Apex Coins for Apex Legends. What's funny, though, was back in 2014, Sony said... A Sony representative said, quote, we don't think asking our fans to pay an additional $5 a month for this EA specific program represents a good play state, good, good value to the PlayStation gamer. I don't know. I'm torn on this. Like I didn't play Anthem. 
I played Apex for like three games and I deleted it. And it's also, it's free to play. I played Madden every other year or something like, I don't know that I need to play 30 bucks a year for this, for, but for people that love EA games, it's good that this is finally coming to the PS4. Right. I can see how people would be interested, but there's not a lot of EA games that I really care about. It does nothing for me. But and at this point, like if they include Jedi Fallen Order, I'm like, well, okay, I'm I've already pre-ordered it because it's a Star Wars game. It's single player. There's no microtransactions. Right. Story focused. Like I, I'm in. You, you sold me. You, it, it went down to fifty bucks when I pre-ordered on Amazon. So I'm like, yep, okay, you got my money. I'm done. Yeah. Just send it. So. I'm glad it's finally there. It's always been weird that it was only on Xbox and not PS4, but it's there now if you want to take advantage of it. Sean, now it's time for the wrap-up. This past week, Ghost Recon Breakpoint was revealed. It is the sequel to Wildlands. It's out October 4th. It's more Wildlands. Four-player co-op, stealth. You can rub mud on yourself and (laughs) stuff and, like, I don't know. Also, again, continuing the PC Master Race War, it will be on the Epic Games Store and not on Steam. I'm so glad I'm not a PC gamer because I feel like this would stress me the F out. Like if I had a super powered like PC rig with like auto cool, like Mr. Turney has. And I was like, I bought all these games on Steam and I got my achievements, all this other stuff. Now it's like, I want to play Ghost Recon Wildlands. Oh, you got to get it over here. That would, that would, yeah. I, don't, I don't want anything to do with PC gaming. It just stresses me out. I'd rather just have my, PS4 that's not as powerful and just play the games that I want to play and not have to worry about anything. Yep. So people are excited. I didn't play Wildlands. I don't really care about this. The May games for uh, Switch Online service are Donkey Kong Jr. versus Excite Bike and Clue Clue Land. So while I was downloading Tetris earlier, I fired up Nintendo on the Switch. Huge. It's almost embarrassingly bad. So you agree with me? The like, user emulation? interface is terrible. Okay. The game selection is... There's no reason they should not be able to just drop every single NES game on there. It's a drag like and that, drop, yes. Be done. Like, And it's not to say there's not good games on there. There's, I mean, there's Mario, Zelda, there's Mario the 3, yeah. Zelda, Star Tropics, like Metroid. Great games on there. It's just nothing that I really care to play like i've played all those games so much part of me just wants to be like what's a game that i haven't played in a while oh there it is i'm gonna play that legacy the wizard there's nothing on there that i care to play and again i say the emulation is not good it does not look as good as the nes classic or my pie it just doesn't yeah i don't know what it is i don't know what they've done with the emulation but it's like the colors are just blah it's just I don't know I don't know why Nintendo's making this so complicated. Yeah, like this sh- in this day and age, you're adding how many games? Three, four games? Two or three a month? It's literally like maybe a megabyte, May- maybe two megabytes worth of games right. that they're putting on there, and they're doing it monthly. Like, right. it, give me a break. Just put we're paying for it. Put your whole library on there. Now, if you want to add monthly those like special things where you can go right to the end of the game, like that'd be cool. Yeah, Do those monthly. Games, yeah. But just put the entire catalog should have been on there by now. And for what it's worth, the entire Super Nintendo catalog should have been on there Correct. by now. Like, I have no idea what game they're Boy. doing. Let us play Game Boy games too. It's uh, Quite frankly, it's kind of embarrassing. It is. Know. And I think that if like uh, when May 26 rolls around is when I can claim my next nine months through Amazon, whatever. I'm glad I got it for free because I'm not impressed at all. I don't play any online games, so this is no. It is all not about the NES for me, but it's just like blah. Yeah, I've the got way the it NES is right now, it's I not worth. I wouldn't pay for it the way it is right now. Yep, I agree. Capcom had an investor call this week where it was notated that Monster Hunter World has now shipped over 12 million copies worldwide, the best-selling game in Capcom history. Now, of course, that counts. Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And They're Street all Fighter Champion separate. And Super Street Fighter 2. Yeah. Su- so, I mean, Street Fighter 2, in all its forms, has probably sold 40 million copies, is what I would just throw a number at. 35 to 40 million. In some, especially when you count the anniversary collection, yeah. Ultra Street Fighter 2, it sold 35 to 40 million, is, would be my guess. But for one title 
That's good. Monster Hunter has never been a thing that I just cared about, honestly. This feels like a game that like a year from now it'll be a PS Plus. Kevin It's crash. This feels like a game that be a PS Plus. I'm tired. <laughs> And even then, I might try it, but it's, it feels like it's one of those games. It's one of those like, well, if you put ten to fifteen hours in it, it gets really good. I yeah, no, no I'd thanks. Rather put ten to fifteen hours into God of War again. Yeah. Uh, also, Resident Evil Two quote exceeded expectations. Everything they've done with Resident Evil for the last two years has just blown me away. I can't wait to see if they do Resident Evil Three remake. I, I think we're gonna get a three make. And we're going to get eight and then three make and then nine on the PS6, whatever it'll be. <laughs> but at this point, Resident Evil 2 is still my game of the year. We're halfway through May. Like that game, when I think back to how much I love that game, like that's another game I probably in a, in a, in a dull time, especially if like Last of Us 2 doesn't come out or anything like that. And depending on when all these other Nintendo games come out, like Link's Awakening, I do want to go back and I want to, I want to flip flop. I want to go through Claire and then Leon. I mean, when you think about going all the way back, I mean, not all the, it's probably been two years, but uh, what is it, Ultra Street Fighter 2 on the Switch? Uh, it was May that year. Yeah, so two, so two years, years ago. Yeah. Um, other than maybe the controller, which whatever, possibly my favorite version, probably my favorite version of all the Street Fighter 2s, Non-compilation. Maybe, right. maybe yeah. my favorite Street Fighter game, period. Um, it's definitely up there. I think they killed it with that. The 30th anniversary collection. Perfect. Like you said, Resident Evil Perfect. 7 was awesome. Resident Evil 2 remake, awesome. It, total fan service. It's what everybody's been asking for. We the got it. Mega Man collections. It. Mega Man great. collection. Monster Disney Hunter. Afternoon. I don't really care about Monster Hunter. But, but obviously killed, it's like, good, right. They are just killing it lately. So, so good for them. <sighs> but it also oh, and then we got Devil May Cry. Which people love Devil May yeah. Cry 5. And that exceeded expectations as well. I forgot to put that in here. Go back three years when Street Fighter Five came out and people were like yeah. me. I, I had big time buyer's remorse. How do you put out a Street of, Street Fighter Street of Fighter game <laughs> Street without an arcade it. mode? But like they did and it's like, what's Capcom doing? And then they put out the, the Mega Man collections. They were great. Resident Evil 7 came out, and they've just been on fire ever since then. Yeah. But when I think back then, I kind of thought about Capcom the way I did Konami after five after MGS5 came out. And Capcom has gone way up here. Mm-hmm. And Konami, I'm happy they're doing the arcade collections. That's at least a step in the right direction. They, they did Super Bomberman R also, so let me give them credit for that. Where's my Metal Gear? <laughs> Stay tuned for E3 prediction. Give me a Metal Gear remake. What are you doing? Like, like Capcom has figured it out, but the, the problem is Capcom is not the same kind of company that Konami is. Konami has Hell Spots and all the Pachinko and all this other crap, yeah. whereas Capcom is a video game company. Now, their whole arcade weird giant Capcom logo that's like five <laughs> that, feet that long. That thing is pretty ridiculous. That thing is weird as hell. To me, that's a big swing in a minute. But yeah, but Time like, will tell. Other than that, they're doing great. I'm, I'm Because ha- like, if you go back and listen to our old episodes, whenever we would do 20 or uh, back the box challenge, we'd be like, is it? 8-bit game or 16 Either way, if it was an 8-bit or 16-bit game, the next question Capcom? was always was Capcom Konami? or Konami. Like, that's our childhood. Like, those two companies mean so much to us and every other kid that grew up in the 80s or the 90s. Like, you didn't grow up in the 80s or the 90s being a fan of video games and not have just a just affection for Capcom and Konami, and they could not be doing more different things right now. Mm-hmm. Tetris 99 Big Block DLC was announced for $9.99. This gives you offline modes like CPU battle and marathon mode. You also get another future mode in the future. And you get a Game Boy theme. I'm not going to pay for this. I hate this game because I suck at it. No. I, I mean, it sounds kind of cool, but I'm not but even dime like, for it. I feel like playing this offline against the CPU is going to make me think I'm better than I am. Then I'm going to go yeah. online and get, I'm still going to get 65th place at the best. Right. And last but not least, Nintendo did confirm that their E3 Nintendo Direct will take place Tuesday, June 11th at 11 a.m. Eastern. So we just will be recording Tuesday that week. We're not going to split it up in like three episodes like we've done in the past. We're going to do all E3 in one episode. So just, yeah. But Nintendo will be there Tuesday, 
June 11th, 11 a.m. Eastern. I hope I don't want to cancel my Mario Maker pre-order. We kind of touched on it last episode, but I still like... What I, could make you want to? Just how it control, like how it... Yeah. Yeah. If it's all I'm about the worried. radial, the, the circle things and stuff, like... But again, like, okay, Kevin, just unplug it and just just hold it and use your freaking finger to drag the stuff yeah. wherever you want it to go, so... And I almost hope, I almost hope, and they won't do this, I almost hope they don't show anything more Link's Awakening. Just give me a date. Don't show another second of anything. I don't want to see a HUD. I don't want to see menus. I don't want to see anything. I just want that game. Yeah. I don't think they will. There's nothing more to show. We've seen gameplay. We've They've done the big reveal. We've seen gameplay. We know what it looks like. We're going to do show more gameplay. This is right. this is more of what it looks Here's like. Here's what the like, hearts look like on the screen. Yeah, we don't need to. Yeah. Sean, did you know it's time for that podcast <laughs> has crashed? <laughs> did you know it's time for that part of the podcast when we do the did you know, Sean? I did. That's right. It says on here. I'm going to go to link to the past again. Sean. Yes. Did you know that a link to the past was what was originally designed to have a party system? Wait. A link to the past? Yeah. With the super, what's that called? Super the MC play, Hammer? The four play, super no, no, play? No, 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 But it was going to be like a Final Fantasy game. It was going to have a party uh, system. Oh. Uh-oh. So single player, but. Oh. Uh. Miyamoto had originally planned for a link to the past to have a party system where you could switch between three characters and utilize their individual vil- a, a, a bit. <laughs> It's like, we their individual ability. Characters. They added so many extra syllables to that word. It's like yeah, between right. their individual abilities. <laughs> their characters would have been a mix between an elf and a fighter, a magic user and a goyle. <laughs> what? <laughs> Cross. Oh. So I think it was more. So Linkel? Yeah, it was more like that's when the whole I mean, four I swords. No, 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 that's way before that. But it's more like when the RP, like Final Fantasy, was taking oh, off in saying. Japan with the party systems and stuff yeah. like this, and they wanted it to be more RPG. And they said, "No, <laughs> it's more <laughs> RPG." That is, I'm, I'm very glad they didn't do that. I'm, and I'm glad they didn't do it. Other than the weird, like Triforce Heroes and, like you said, Four Swords Adventures and stuff like that. Where, again, I think. If it was a different time, if we would have each been seven, eight years younger and had a GameCube or to where we could both, I don't know, I don't even remember. It was Four Swords Adventures. There was the GameCube game and then there was the Game Boy Advance where you had to hook four Game Boys and some weird octopi thing. To, right. Like, I feel like if we were younger, I feel like that could have been fun, but that's, it's like hashtag not my Zelda. Exactly. I think it would. It probably. It probably would be fun if we played it today. But it's not Zelda. You're like I can't remember which is which. But there's one where your big thing. It's all about like collecting rupees, and you're like in competition to see who can get the most rupees. And like, just don't even call this Zelda. Like, yeah. Whatever. But it's interesting that they took the four sword and then made that go into um, Minish Cap. And I feel like there was one other game that might have had the four sword in it as well. But that's where that was like the yeah. base for Minish Cap. And something right. Else. I yeah. can't remember what it was, but Minish Cap criminally underrated Zelda game. I think it's underrated because that's it was another Cap one. That's down. one. Oh, that's the next one we need a remake of. Honestly, as much as I would love Link to the Past to get remade, just prettier graphics. But like we basically had that. I mean, we have it in Link Between Worlds. Close honestly. enough. Yeah. 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 Give us Minish Cap. That HD. would be awesome. I agree. That's been it for episode 136. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, if you didn't know, you can find us on nerd901.com. Go over to nerd901.com for all the things that we're doing. Nick, Adam, Ernie, everybody else is doing. Check them out. Uh, obviously, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Kevin White 24 He's at Real Sean White. Together, we're at two-player. 
underscore co-op. Again, go over to our profile there. Check out the link that we have in the Google Doc that is in the, the pin profile on the thing of the link. If you want to submit any questions for the next podcast or any podcast in the future, go ahead and do that over there. Uh, obviously, if it also, I mean, not obvious, but if you're listening on audio services around the globe, like Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, and other audio services around the multiverse, you should still go over youtube.com slash two player co-op and hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to us and it will help us out a lot. This has been a good episode. I don't know how we went as long as we did. I feel like we didn't have a lot to talk about. We're up <laughs> like an hour and 25 minutes. Thank you guys so much for being here. Until next week, though, Sean, go ahead and take us out. Thank you for playing. <laughs>